Today we're going to be talking about value types versus reference types. This is one of those things you absolutely have to know if you're going to have any sort of future or career as a C-sharp developer. And this doesn't matter at what stage you are in your programming journey, if you're a brand new junior or many years of experience, uh, if at any point you've if you understand what a class is, you absolutely have to know what the difference is between reference types and value types. So even if you don't like my explanation, um, if it doesn't help you at all and you still don't get it, go and do some other research. Watch somebody else's video. If you want to progress as a programmer, it's definitely a topic you need to know. If you don't fully understand how reference types and value types work, you can find yourself getting some weird and unexpected behavior when, you, when performing copying of objects or comparing objects. So we're going to delve into the details of that. We'll also speak about uh, why no reference exceptions happen. So C Sharp stores its variables in two different ways. Its value types, it stores in the area of memory called the stack. These are ints, bools, floats, chars, there's a whole bunch of them. And then there's reference types. These are stored in the area of memory called the heap. Examples of reference types are class instances, so objects, arrays, dictionaries, collections, lists, there's a whole bunch of them. This is where we actually store the reference and not the value itself. So let's quickly have a look at some code to illustrate the differences. Here I have a simple application. X starts out of 10, Y starts out of 20. We then say that uh, X is equal to Y and we're writing out to the screen. Now they're both 20 and we increment X and X becomes 21 and Y stays at 20. This is exactly what you'd expect from value types, nothing new here. Right, so now we'll do something similar with the reference types and see the difference. So we'll declare two uh, instances of the person class here, Jason and Michael, and one's got a count of 100, the other one's got a count of 200, and we'll set P1 equal to P2. Then what we'll do is go and change the value of P2, and you'll see if we look at the output over here, after we make the copy, you will see that P1 will have exactly the same values as P2, as expected. But the difference comes in when we actually make a change to P2, you'll see that it effectively changes P1 at the same time. So here when we go and increment our P2 count from 200, it does increment P2, but it also increments P1. Right, so what is actually happening here? Easiest way to see this is to see what's happening in memory at the, as the, we go through the code. So, so we declare and initialize x to a value of 10. Memory is allocated on the stack to store the value of 10. We initialize y with a value of 20. Memory is allocated on the stack with a value of 20. At this point, we then go and copy y into x, and it will take the value from y and move it into x. Then we go and increment the value of x. All right. Now when we instance a object of the, our first object to the person, P1, objects are stored on the heap, so an area is allocated to store P1 values. In this case, it's Michael and 100, which is the count. The address of that location is stored on the stack, which m works as a pointer to where that uh, data resides. We declare and initialize P2, and likewise, some somewhere on the heap the 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 data for p2 is stored and once again we store the address or the pointer to that location we store on the stack when p1 is assigned to p2 what we're really doing is we are copying the address at which to which it points so now that p2 is pointing to the same area of data was pointing to the same data as p1 so now when we go and change the properties of P2, what we're doing is we're changing it in the location to where P2 points. This also helps explain why we have null reference exceptions. In a case where we set P2 e equal to null, if we try and access the data to where P2 points, we are no longer pointing to anywhere on the heap. So when we try and say P2.name is equal to some value, our pointer no longer points to anywhere the compiler doesn't know how to handle this, hence we get a null reference exception. Exact same thing happens when you call a method and you're passing a object through as a parameter. You're passing it by reference, which means it makes an additional copy of that address 
but you're still pointing to the same area in, in memory. So even if we update the value of count inside the method, it's still affecting the original place where we were pointing the data to. This is important to know when comparing variables as well. These two in integers have the same value of 10. If we compare them, you'll notice that they end up with having the same value. Whereas if we take two, make two instances of the person variable that have the same value, both of Michael and have a count of 100, if we make a comparison with those two, you'll find that they aren't equal. And the reason is, is because they're both, they're pointing to different addresses. Hence, they are not equal, even though their properties, uh, the values of each of their pro individual properties are the same. There's a couple of caveats to this. Primitive types can also end up on the heap depending on where they're declared throughout your program. For example, if they're global variables that it needs to be accessible throughout the application, same with static variables. Also, strings themselves are a bit of an anomaly because they are reference types. However, as far as when you're copying them, they behave more like value types. This is because strings are immutable. Every time you assign one string to another, behind the scenes, um, C Sharp is making a copy of that and it's handing back you a new reference to you. So that's the basics of value types versus reference types. If this helped you out at all, I'd love to know, just say a comment. Yeah, let me know in the comments See, it helped or not. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.